I, 27, and my brother John, 26, are very close, so I was definitely shocked when he surprised us on Thanksgiving by bringing his new girlfriend Chelsea. He was very happy though, and to be honest, that's the only thing we want for him, so we, grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, held off on all questions until another time. Anyway, dinner time rolls around and we're sharing everything, and my aunt Kinda pulls me off to the side and tells me we're not gonna be eating my mashed potatoes, because Chelsea brought some, and John asked that we serve those. I was a little peeved not gonna lie, because I've done the mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving since I was 16, but I got over it pretty fast. I really didn't care as long as they were good. Spoiler alert, they were not. Everything that could have gone wrong with those potatoes went wrong. They were raisins. She was really excited though so when she asked everybody if they were good she got some MMMS. You know, the kind you do with your mouth closed and an uncomfortable smile on your face. Everything else was good, so her dish was highlighted. We all thought we passed it though, until my nephew spit it out into a tissue. She said something about not pleasing everybody to lighten the mood cause we were all looking at him hard as hell, and my brother went I'm sure they glad to have a break from, my, potatoes anyway and then laughed. I wasn't gonna say anything, but my sister, 22, SAID1 we are not in the most monotone voice, and I just laughed, man. Like one burst of a cackle. Chelsea teared up and the rest of the night was awkward. My brother called me an idiot and is still mad at me. Am I the idiot? Edit. My sister and I both apologized, although I just said I'm really sorry, and my sister did more. Not the idiot. Your brother is the idiot here. He set her up. He should have told the family he was bringing someone to dinner. He knew that you make mashed potatoes every year. He saw those raisins. And then he made that comment about your dish. Your brother set her up. You laughing at your sister's comment is a result of your brother being dumb. If it's the first time you bring a new girlfriend, you don't have her make a dish. If she really needed to cook something, it should have been discussed with the family beforehand, not as a surprise. You better than me because I would have refused raisin potatoes and snuck my own potatoes out. Everyone's the idiot here. Or at least, everyone except the girlfriend is rude. Your brother for not checking what she could bring, and for saying what he did about your potatoes. Your sister, for her comment. You for laughing. And honestly, some of the people in this thread are rude as hell. Would I be amped to have mashed potatoes with raisins? No. But she made an effort to contribute, and saying get that child a cookbook is so obnoxious and over the top. It's not her fault her boyfriend didn't communicate to her what to bring or not to bring anything. Not the idiot for what was an involuntary reaction that you didn't let go farther. Your brother shouldn't have said what he said because it was inane and only caused to prompt your sister's response, which is the only thing that bordered on possible a deity. Yet I confess I love the monotone delivery I'm sure it was hilarious. Girlfriend is also a borderline idiot for raisins and mashed potatoes. Even if that was some beloved family recipe it would be such a curveball to bring to a gathering of people you don't know. Context. My, 23, sister, 25, has had amazing successes in her life, but she wants everyone to pity her for her struggles, and she desperately wants people's attention. Whenever my sister talks about her success, she continuously brings up the negative parts of her successes to receive sympathy from others. For example, she recently graduated from teacher's college and had a 99.5% average, and she will bring it up weekly that she's mad she didn't finish with a 100% average. In addition, I've recently been accepted into teacher's college, and she often cracks jokes that the only reason I'll do well is because she's my sister and my reputation will help me out. When I tell her that my hard work and passion will help me, she will roll her eyes, laugh, and walk away. She's one of those people who put people down to make herself feel better, and she'll try to embarrass you because she thinks it's funny. The situation. We were eating supper as a family, and I was talking about how the virus could possibly cancel my graduation, since I didn't want to attend which would work out in my favor. My sister states loudly at least your graduation wasn't ruined by your entire family. She graduated university three years ago, my divorced parents got into an argument, but I told them to stop because it wasn't the time nor the place. However, she will bring up at almost every family dinner how her graduation was ruined, everyone was terrible to her, and everyone destroyed her day. 
She doesn't or refuses to remember that my parents apologized. My mom wanted to take her and the entire family out for lunch. My sister refused to pick a restaurant and sat in the restaurant in silence for an hour and a half. Then we jumped to another topic of discussion. We were talking about weddings since my sister and her boyfriend are walking in a wedding next year. Earlier in the day, I had shown my sister a video of groomsmen and bridesmaids changing outfits for their entrance into the reception, and my sister loved it. As we discussed wedding, I showed my sister's boyfriend the video of the groomsman and bridesmaid, and my sister loudly says that's freaking stupid, we're not doing that. Then she continues to bring up how my idea was dumb, and it was embarrassing to even bring it up. That was the straw that broke the camel's back, and I said pretty calmly why do you that? Why do you purposely make feel bad in front of people? You already get enough attention, but you have this complex where you have to put people down to make yourself feel better. Plus, you liked the video when I showed it to you early, but now that you're in front of everyone you're trying to act cool, but it just makes you seem like a jerk. My younger sister and her boyfriend laughed, my mom was pissed, and my sister didn't talk to me for days. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You didn't result to insults outside of the situation at hand. I think you directly confronted a problem as it presented itself. Her actions have consequences and perhaps, if she doesn't want to be challenged on her crap, she shouldn't start in the first place. Some people are just obnoxious. That doesn't mean they're evil, just annoying and really tone deaf. That seems to be the situation here. The only want to make someone like that stop is to continually confront them in a calm, cool manner to take their power away. Not the idiot, but I am gonna say it sounds like she has really really low self-esteem. She needs people to continually reinforce the fact that she did well or is great, and putting someone else down is the only way she feels like she has control. It's crappy to deal with, but she won't stop until she is ready and happy to address this. I would just let her be and do your best not to engage, ignore her heart in lockdown, because she'll only feel self-righteous in her victimhood if you point it out. Not the idiot. Your sister is a raging narcissist and has a toxic personality. All that A plus schooling means diddly squat when you are a crappy human. I'm not trying to be mean towards her, but she needs to understand that all of her problems she is stating do not matter at all. It's all look at me not the motions to draw on sympathy and praise. Eventually, that will stop working for her, because college grades are just a small blimp on your life radar. I cut ties with all my friends who did very similar actions years ago, and I'm happy to report I do not necessarily miss them. I, 28, recently got engaged to my fiancé, Zach, 27. I get along really well with his family, me and his mom have a lot in common and have even hung out a few times without him to grab lunch or coffee. Zach and I have been dating for around three years and we spent a decent amount of time with his family since they live fairly close. He has one sister, Carrie, 35. Carrie has a small green parrot, I think he's too big to be a parakeet, who Carrie has registered as an emotional support animal for her anxiety and depression. I love animals, but he's completely out of control. He will try to bite anyone but Carrie who gets too close and will fly and attack mostly men's heads, to the point where I've heard stories from Zach of having to run out of the house to get away. There's also always screeching or repeating random words and weird coughing noises from him on Carrie's side of the phone while you're calling her. So, now in the present, Zach and I are trying to plan our wedding, it won't be until next summer at the very least, since everything's so uncertain right now. Carrie wanted to help us plan, since she has a degree in design and seemed really excited for us, and we were kind of lost on the planning so we accepted. We were on FaceTime with Carrie and she cracked a joke about what Jimmy was going to wear. We laughed and moved on, but then she brought him up again when we were talking about hors d'oeuvre, saying how if we got these certain canops she could safely feed some to Jimmy. At this point, I was getting a little worried and said something like guess you can bring him one home. She was quiet for a second and then said, I was under the impression that Jimmy was welcome at this event and Zach started trying to explain how the wedding would be too overwhelming for Jimmy and how he wouldn't be safe there, obviously not the actual reason, but he thought she'd understand more if he put it that way. She started sniffling and I could see her tearing up and she started telling us in a shaky voice how she needed him there and how we didn't understand what she went through. 
I got pissed and told her that we were allowed to not want a loud, psychotic bird at our wedding, and that I wasn't convinced he even was a real support animal. I feel bad about the last part, but so many people abuse the support animal system. She hung up on us and has been telling Zach's whole family that we're horrible and mean for not accommodating her disabilities. Zach's family is split, some think we're being totally unreasonable, but others have had bad personal experiences with Jimmy and understand our position. Honestly, I'd rather lose out on a few people attending the wedding, rather than be strong-armed into letting someone bring their disruptive paired. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Con your owner here, small type of paired. Parrots are very needy animals, leaving them alone for too long, if they're not used to it can actually be dangerous to the animal, so I can see why she assumed he could come, support animal or not. That being said, and less specifically planned for, a wedding is absolutely no place for a paired. Especially a poorly trained one as he sounds to be. The loud noises, countless strangers, unsafe food or drink, all would be dangerous to any bird. Not the idiot, you're doing Jimmy a favor. Not the idiot owner of an emotional support animal. He keeps me calm and helps me out, but I can function outside of my home without him for a few hours, provided I know what I'm getting myself into. Not to mention that birds can be especially hard to train. I can see both sides of the situation, and I think your sister-in-law is being overdramatic. If she can't attend a function for a few hours, knowing that she won't be the center of attention, then she needs therapy and a registered service animal. Not the idiot. I find it hard to see how a manic parrot can be a calming influence on anyone, really. However, assuming the bird does somehow give her reassurance, there's still no way you could have it at your wedding. There are plenty of people who are scared of birds, especially ones which aren't being confined. And can you imagine the celebrant saying does anyone know of a reason why these two cannot be joined in marriage, and the parrot squawking out some random word. It's safe to say that I am a dog person. I've always loved dogs and always had dogs, and my dog that I have now is my best bud. I love how social they are and how much they show love back to their humans, and that they are smart and trainable. I definitely do not like cats. Lots of people love them and that's fine. But I personally do not even slightly see the appeal of taking care of an animal that doesn't give two craps if you live or die, and that takes an insane amount of training and effort to learn even basic commands, which they will only ever do if they feel like it. I can't count how many times I've been scratched or bitten by a cat for no other reason than I dared to go near it. So yeah. Not a fan. My girlfriend and I have been dating for coming up on one year, and she is a one in a million girl. When we're apart I often find myself just wanting to spend time together, she is wickedly funny, and always making me laugh out loud, and an amazing artist. And, she has a cat. It is not a particularly bad cat or anything, as far as cats go. Very average. But I am so the opposite of a cat person, that even average is bad. Have you ever hated someone so much that every little thing annoys you? That's what cats are like to me, and this cat is just everywhere when I am hanging out at my girlfriend's apartment. Jumping up and down from shelves, stepping on my crotch, kneading my leg with its paws, and most importantly claws, yowling outside the bedroom door whenever I spend the night. My girlfriend of course loves him and doesn't see any flaws. All of this wouldn't be a problem, but as I said we are approaching one year and I have been thinking about our future together. I can see myself marrying this girl, and I want her to move in with me. But I do not want to have a cat. I don't even know if my dog will get along with it, and I know I won't get along with it. I've tried to talk to my girlfriend about the issue, and she just turned stone freaking cold. Hey maybe, cat can live with your parents when we move in together. They are in the same city as us. No. We're a package deal. I tried very calmly and rationally explaining to her the issue, and she outright said that need to figure out what's more important to me, because either they both move in with me, or we break up and stop wasting each other's time. Just full ultimatum and holding the relationship hostage. I feel like I am stuck between a rock and a hard place here. If she's playing hardball, would it be an idiot move for me to play hardball right back and say that she can't move in until she rehomes the cat? You're the idiot. You are holding the relationship hostage, she had the cat when you met her, but you now want her to get rid of him, because you don't like them. How would you feel, if she asked you to give up your dog? Don't say it's different, because cats are different, that's just your opinion, the cat is her pet whom she loves, and wants to keep. 
You obviously haven't even tried to get along with him, and good for her for sticking to her guns. Maybe she isn't the girl for you seeing as she's a cat person. If you don't agree with that, do better and get to know the cat, you might like him, so might your dog. You're the idiot. She is not playing hardball, she's telling you the cat is non-negotiable. If you treat this as a game, you're going to lose. And the next guy who comes along will make friends W the cat, maybe help her build the cat a climbing post, or buy the cat some catnip toys. He'll snuggle with her at night and wonder, what kind of idiot could let such a one in a million girl like her go over a damn cat. As an aside, if you're playing games instead of actually communicating, you aren't ready for a serious live-in relationship. The comments have made it clear you are the idiot. If her cat is needing you he is most likely marking his territory on you, maybe because you have dog scent on you. Stepping on your crotch is not on purpose, he was just simply getting from point A to B. If you lock the cat out of the room when you sleep over, when he is used to sleeping on the bed, of course, he will meow to get back inside. You can train the cat not to need you and step on you. Meanwhile, you can try to not be triggered by every single thing he does. He's just being a cat. Little backstory. I, 21, have a huge family, besides my dad, uncles, and cousins' husbands I'm the only guy in my family. We are a loud bunch and I see them a lot and I love every stinking one of them. A few years back one of my cousins said that since we have such a big family, we should do a secret Santa thing, where we all pull names from a hat, and whoever you get you get to give them a gift under 100 bucks. A great idea, very affordable. Excluding children, of course, anyone under the age of 15 gets a gift like regular from everyone. Recently we were all hanging out at my cousin's house, who is pregnant with her second child due in May, and her other baby will be one years old on the 27th, and the topic of Secret Santa came up. We were all talking about Secret Santa and if people got their gifts yet, and I said, yeah I got mine, now all I have to get is the kid something then I'm good. My pregnant cousin and my aunt said, what did you get the kids? They weren't in the room at the time, so I could tell the adults what I got them. Then I told them all, what I could my four nieces and one nephew for Christmas. My cousin responded, aren't you forgetting someone? I honestly couldn't think about who I was forgetting so I said, no ha ha. She then said, what about baby number two? Pointing to her stomach, because she doesn't have a name yet. Me who thought she was joking said, oh yeah duh how could I forget? With an obvious joking tone in my voice. The room went from everyone talking over each other and laughs to dead silence, and was like what the hell happened. She then looked me dead in the eye and asked if I was really not getting the baby something, and I said, no why would I? The baby isn't even born yet. She and my aunt and other cousins all jumped on my case and freaked out, and after 20 minutes of arguing my case I just left and told them I would see them at Christmas. So am I the idiot for not getting my cousin's second baby, who is due in May a Christmas gift? Not the idiot, that is crazy. Personally, I think it is nonsense to get Christmas or birthday gifts for any children under two. They play with Tupperware as happily as with toy cars, and at that age, they don't need huge amount of toys. I start giving gifts for Christmas and birthdays at about age three, when they actually start to understand what is happening around them, and start to have preferences and show those. But that is just me. For unborn children, however, that is crazy. Not the idiot. One year my cousin got a lot of baby stuff for Christmas because she had recently announced she was expecting and it was her first child, first grandchild for her and her hubby's parents, everyone was excited about it. But the gifts were given to my cousin as her gifts, not gifted to the baby, while well, she got even more stuff for herself. That I've never really heard of anyone doing. In some cultures, it's even considered bad luck to buy things for babies before they're born. Not the idiot. She can wait for her baby shower, or sprinkle as I think they call them for a second baby, since normally you don't go as all out, or until baby's actual first Christmas like any other reasonable human being. I honestly can't fathom why she would think her unborn baby would be entitled to a Christmas present, and this is coming from someone who was practically pulsing with hormones, to the point of almost constant tears during my pregnancy, 